In another video, I made a case for the importance of language, and it is incredibly important. We talked about language and words and the role they play and, and, uh, and, and how they influence culture and all kinds of stuff with language. And that's really important. Um, and we just talked about how important that is though. And, and so when we think about that though, the whole time, uh, nonverbal is just off to the side. I can see nonverbal communication just off to the side saying, oh, dude, that's cute. I'll hold my beer watch this. Uh, we're going to show you what's really up because nonverbal is incredibly important as well. So uh, while they work together a lot, nonverbal is really important, but it's time for us to get the rest of the story. It really, it's hard to talk about them separately. Um, verbal and nonverbal work so much together, but, um, but it's time to get the rest of the story and talk about specifically about the nature of nonverbal um, communication. Okay. So um, let's start by talking about what is nonverbal communication. And again, I want to just jump back real quickly we talked in a previous video about language, which is, and said language is the symbolic system of written or spoken words used to communicate messages. And that is verbal communication, right? Language is verbal communication, a symbolic system of written or spoken words used to communicate messages. So if I were to define then nonverbal communication, it would pretty much just be pretty much everything else. That's nonverbal communication, pretty much everything else. Uh, if you want to get technical, okay, you know, I'm supposed to be this scholar or whatever. I don't know. And, you know, so, uh, but so we get technical and we'll say that uh, then that nonverbal communication are aspects of communication that do not involve verbal communication, but which may include gestures, facial expressions, posture, distance, vocal characteristics, and more. Okay, so there's your technical definition of nonverbal communication. But really, all that says is after we talked about language and verbal communication is it's pretty much everything else is nonverbal communication. So all the other aspects of kind of especially outgoing communication, but we, we pay attention to it in incoming as well. But everything else is nonverbal. Okay, so verbal communication are the words that we choose and the words that we use. Uh, everything else is nonverbal. So let's get down to talking about what is the nature of nonverbal by the nature of nonverbal. I mean, what are the, the characteristics of nonverbal communication? What are, what are the kind of the basics of nonverbal communication and, and some principles that we need to understand to lay a foundation here. Um, first of all, we need to understand that nonverbal communication uses multiple channels, multiple channels. We communicate, you know, uh, verbal communication has just one channel, the words, the language, right? That's it. Uh, however, whatever you want to call it, uh, it's one channel, right? But nonverbal communication has all kinds of things that we use. We communicate in lots of different ways, nonverbally, not just through this one channel. And we're going to get touch on all these more specifically in a, in a, in a different uh, video, but, but, but things like body movement uh, and kinesics, which would include things like facial displays, eye behaviors, posture, gestures, all of that is in kinesics there. Things like haptics or touch, right? voice, which we call paralanguage, space, meaning um, how we use the space around us and also um, what that communicates to others, like personal space and social space, things like that. The use of time, uh, clothing and appearance, our physical environment, our, the use of smell, the way we smell and, and, and perceive smell. All of that are different channels of nonverbal communication. So again, in verbal communication, you have one channel. Nonverbal communication, you have all of this other stuff. Right, so we're going to get more into detail into that in a different video, but just understand that there are lots of different channels involved in nonverbal communication. Nonverbal communication is also primarily relational. We use nonverbal communication to relate to other people. We use it to express and understand emotion um, and feelings and, and to develop and to maintain those, those interpersonal relationships and, and even professional relationships, right? Depend on nonverbal communication. And this is separating it really from like factual, factual communication. We don't use nonverbal communication to convey facts. We use it to maintain and develop relationships. So for example, it would be hard um, to use. And if I said to you now, you're going to just use nonverbal communication and that's it. Nonverbal communication is the only type of communication you can use. Using that, I want you to express and explain to people around you. The American Civil War lasted from 1861 to 1864. That's what I want you to explain nonverbally only. Now, keep in mind, sign language is verbal communication. Sign language is verbal communication. So you can't technically use sign language. I mean, it, you, that's just not how we communicate. Nonverbal communication is not used to share factual information really like that. Not, I mean, to explain information and things, it's relational. We use it to connect to other people, to express emotion, to convey things, right? 
and we don't use it to, to share facts really. So, uh, it is primarily relational. Nonverbal communication is ambiguous. That means it's just kind of, it's, it's fuzzy, right? It's not always clear. Verbal communication has some ambiguity to it. Um, we can, we can be abstract in our verbal communication if we so choose, but we can also be very concrete with it. Uh, but, uh, but it's what verbal communication can be ambiguous, but nowhere near as ambiguous as nonverbal communication is just in general. So if I were to say to you, okay, name this facial expression, let's play a game, name this facial expression. Can you identify what this person is feeling just from these facial expressions? I mean, maybe some of them, yeah, we could probably agree on some of them, but there are others where it's like, I don't know, is he in pain? Is he constipated? Is he, is he like, you know, uncomfortable it's trying to smile i don't know there's some that uh, that you just can't we we probably wouldn't have a consensus on right because nonverbal communication is ambiguous there's some fuzziness there oftentimes um and so so it's not always as clear as you would think and then you fold into that if you get into intercultural stuff the different cultures then have different different meanings for uh, all these things so it's it's ambiguous enough when you're in the same culture when you add in that that additional layer of intercultural when you're talking about somebody from a different culture oh my gosh it's so ambiguous there's so many different possible uh, answers there right? it's the, the variables are almost infinite in that instance so um nonverbal communication though is ambiguous it, and so we have to be very very careful about saying, no, I definitely know what's happening because of this nonverbal thing. It's not always as clear as we think it is, even if it's totally crystal clear in our mind. Okay. Uh, nonverbal communication occurs also though in mediated messages. Now this may not make much sense. When we say mediated messages, we're talking about like email and texting and, and things that are really verbal in nature. Um, but because nonverbal communication is so critically important, we have found ways to insert and substitute um, and find ways to, you know, just kind of inject verbal communication channels with that are, that are kind of strictly verbal. We found ways to uh, apply nonverbal communication. So what are we, what, what do we mean by this? So one example would be intermediate communication. Um, so for example, like we could use all caps, for example, it would be a very simple one. When somebody texts you and it's all caps. That sends a message, right? I mean, not the, the language itself is the same. The words themselves are the same, but because it's all caps, you think they're yelling, right? Unless it's coming from like your, your grandfather and then it's just, he doesn't know how to use his phone. But, um, but mostly all caps means yelling. And so you read it differently than you would um, if the, if the same exact words were there just in regular lower case. Right? Um, but another way that we insert um, and, and, use nonverbal communication and mediated messages is emojis, of course. Um, emojis or emoticons, we used to call them. Now, when I first started, you know, I'm old enough to remember text-based stuff being very new, email very, very new. And so basically we had this. This was our emoji, our emoji right? It was using the, the colon and the, the closed parentheses to, to make a smiley face. Now, eventually, of course, we evolved. We expanded to have all these different emojis, right? Now you have access to all this. And, and of course, now you got, I mean, you can do anything almost in emojis. People communicate entirely in emojis. And, you know, and that's amazing. But that's us inserting nonverbal communication into a into a channel that is that is highly, highly verbal in nature, but nonverbal communication is so important to us and providing that context is so important that we find ways to insert um, nonverbal communication through the use of things in mediated communication through the use of things like emojis. My favorite, by the way, is the ice cream emoji. I love ice cream. So that's my favorite. But uh, And nonverbal communication is influenced by culture as well. Culture is, is very influential in nonverbal communication. Again, it's very ambiguous. So it's different in different cultures, but uh, and just like the meaning of a language changes, you know, the language changes from culture to culture at times, uh, the, the nonverbals will as well. And what are the norms for those nonverbals? So, for example, things like how do we greet somebody in another culture? Is it a handshake or a bow or what is it anymore? It might be an elbow bump or fist bump or whatever. But how do we greet somebody? That's different nonverbally. Uh, how do people dress in those cultures? How do people engage in in touch? Right. So in different cultures, it may be more common for, uh, you know, men and or women to hold hands, even if they're just friends or if they're just professionals. That may be, you know, the, the, the rules for touch may be different in those cultures. And then, of course, specific meanings behind different um, nonverbal emblems. Right. So in our culture, this on the bottom right, in the culture of the United States, 
that would mostly mean okay, right? We would, we would say that means okay, but in other cultures, it means something a little more vulgar, right? It's a referral. If you do that to somebody, then they're going to, then they're going to think you're calling them, um, a, a part of your anatomy that is similarly shaped and, um, and rhymes with, um, um, rhymes with, um, mutt coal. Uh, anyway, I, I, I want to keep this family friendly, but it, so it can mean different things in different cultures. Everything can mean different things in different cultures. It's very ambiguous. So, uh, so, so cultural will have an enormous influence on how we um, communicate and how we interpret nonverbal um, signals and cues. So we need to be highly aware of that if we are in a different culture, that the, the, the rules may be different in that culture. So again, we discussed in another video, nonverbal communication is uh, highly impactful in communication in general. It is up to sixty-five uh, percent or more sometimes. It depends on depends on the study you read, but uh, but on average, we would say you know sixty-five percent of of communication is nonverbal. That's a lot of it. That makes it very important. So we've got to be very aware uh, of this. And in a culture like the United States, if the if you're watching this in the United States, we are very low context culture, meaning we take things very literally. We take, we're very textual. We, we're very verbally oriented, but we've got to be more aware of our own nonverbal signals and the nonverbal cues of others. Um, and, and just be more sensitive to that, um, as we communicate with others, because nonverbal is such a critical part of communication just in general. But certainly then when you expand into different cultures and start talking interculturally, um, it just it becomes even more critical because it is so different and so ambiguous. And, and the game changes quite a bit. Okay. So we're going to get into those specific nonverbal channels <coughs> in a different um, in a different video. So be sure you check that out and learn more about the different specific types of nonverbal channels and the impact that they can have on communication in general. If you have questions about nonverbal communication, just in general, the, non, the nature of nonverbal or kind of the principles of nonverbal communication, please feel free to email me. I'd love to hear from you there. Um, in the meantime, I hope this has been helpful in helping you kind of understand the basics and the foundation of nonverbal communication to kind of set the stage for further discussion of some of these principles. And specifically, as we get into the different codes and channels of nonverbal communication more expansively uh, down the road.